Okay, so in front of us we have an RX 580. It's um a GTS, I think it's called, dash R. I actually don't remember the model. I've had this card for well over half a year now, actually. I've kind of used it as a parts card, briefly. Um, that's why you can see the... Shit. Anyways, that's why you can see the uh, missing MOSFET over here. So anyways, I've been meaning to cover a lot more AMD cards recently, given I've been hyper-focused on NVIDIA and the GTX 10 series in particular. So this is probably going to hopefully be my first serious repair of an RX 580. Anyways, so the first thing we want to do, of course, is to check for short on the base voltage rails. In particular, we want to check for 12 volts and 3.3 volts. So starting with the PCI Express slot, if you don't know, the PCI Express um, slot provides both 12 volts and 3.3 volts. So I have my multimeter in beep mode. When my probe touches something that is connected to ground, such as ground itself, it beeps. So anyways, if you don't know, 12 volts is the first three pin pins over here. So if we just put our probe on the, to the uh, one of the first three pins, we see we don't have a short. So that's good. So 12 volts at the PCI Express slot is not, is not short. Then we want to check 3.3 volts. So in order to check 3.3 volts, we start at this notch and we go four pins left. And checking for the fourth pin, we're good. So the other way to check it is that the fifth pin going left is actually ground. So if you find that ground pin and you go one to the right, you'll be at 3.3 volts. Anyways, so now let's check um, 12 volts. So 12 volts actually at the eight, eight pin, I mean, external eight pin. So 12 volts at the external eight pin actually has two inductors. We have both this one and this one. Either is fine. So we're just going to do this one first. So it starts off low and beeping actually, but then it's, it keeps steadily increasing. This is perfectly fine, so we are good on the base voltage rails. Now we want to check the actual voltage rails required to run the card, so, well, the, well, I don't know, not, not to suggest that 12 volts and 3.3 volts is not needed to run the card or anything, of course they are. Anyways, so first we're going to start, okay, with my multimeter in resistance mode, we're going to start with the display rail, so it has a proper name, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I call it the display rail because if you have a problem with, let's say, your display outputs, or like it, it sometimes is unstable but works perfectly fine as a secondary card this voltage rail can sometimes be to blame so anyways checking the um resistance on this rail we should get something very low 13 ohms this is actually perfect well 14 ohms this is actually perfectly normal if you can believe it it's normally very very low so that's good now we want to check 5 volts and 1.8 volts so going to the back of the card 5 volts is generated by a linear Oh, whoops. Oh, gee, okay. Okay, hold on. Okay, so 5 volts is actually generated by this here. It's a linear dropout regulator. 5 volts is the middle pin, so when I measure it in a moment, so you'll know which pin. And 1.8 volts is generated by this. It's used to power the BIOS chip, which I think is... Maybe both of these, actually, given this is a dual BIOS card. But, anyways, it's, it's somewhere around here. Anyway, so if you don't know, what the output for this particular chip is actually this... Uh, pin over here. Unfortunately, I've made a slight error, so the actual the output pin is actually to the right of the one that I'm probing. So, yep, that's the, what I'm going to that's what I'm going to be measuring in a moment. So, now let's put the card back on the stand and hook up our ground probe. And first, we're going to I'm going to check um, the 5 volt output. So, putting my um, probe on the output of the 5 volt linear dropout regulator, we have 820 ohms, that's perfectly fine. Now let's check the 1.8 volt output. And we have 2.2 kilo ohms, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so we have perfectly, perfectly normal resistance. Now we wanna check both the memory and the memory controller. So, oh gee, so I think this is the memory controller and this is the memory, given that this has I'm assuming that the memory requires more power than the actual memory controller. I could be wrong. So anyways, let's just check them both and see if anything looks off. So I'm going to start with the bottom one. So checking the resistance on the bottom um, inductor, we have 21 ohms. That's, again, perfectly normal. This is, um, actually, maybe it's the memory, actually. I'm not too sure. Like, don't take my word for what it is. I just know that one's the memory and the other's the memory controller. Now checking the Vote, sorry, the resistance on the um, other rail, we should have, let's see, 50, okay, yeah, 59 is perfectly normal, so again, this is perfectly good, so all the resistance rails look perfectly good, so the card is presumably perfectly safe to turn on, so let's go ahead and do that, so give me a moment, okay, switching to voltage mode, and now that my power supply is on, let's boot the card. 
Okay, now that the card is on, let's go ahead and check all the voltage rails. So first, let's start with the display voltage. You, expect, you should expect to see about 920 millivolts. So in this case, 909, 910 is perfectly fine. Now let's check the, um, let's check five volts actually. Five volts, perfectly good. So 5.1, that's nice. Now let's check 1.8. 394 millivolts, this is not high enough, unfortunately. Now let's check the memory controller. 950, more or less what we expect. And finally, the memory itself. One point, a bit of a bit above 1.5, which is what we expect. So, actually, I don't think we checked the GPU V core, but yep, zero. So nothing on the GPU. Yep. Anyways, so like I said, you know, there's a okay. We're missing. Okay, firstly, we're missing the GPU V core. This could be because we have a, we have a low voltage on. Well, this could be because either we're missing a MOSFET, or it also might be because we're missing 1.8 volts. So, anyways, as you saw, we had like. So for this card, we want to focus first on 1.8 volts. The GPU V core might be caused by the lack of um the lack of V core might be because of the missing MOSFETs in which the card may be turning itself off. So, anyways, like I said, we want to focus on 1.8 volts. So in particular, we want to focus on voltage in, enable, and then you know some sort of VCC. So actually, in this case, it would be called um V control, I think. So if you don't know. The 1.8 volt buck con buck converter, or actually no, I think it's a linear dropout regula regulator actually, but this is an APL 5932A. So, anyways, like I said, we want to check enable voltage in, and we want to also check um, the V control, if you will. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So now, that the, now that the card is on again, let's first check voltage in so you should see 3.3 volts yep now checking enable so yeah 3.3.2 that's fine now finally let's check the v control or in some other cards you know i'm sorry um sorry lin generally you know like the vcc ish pin 132 millivolts i think yes so as we can see we're missing our uh, v control so 132 millivolts is definitely not high enough. I need to poke around the card a little bit to see what's wrong, but I have a suspicion that you may have noticed some corrosion on the five volt buck converter and some nearby components. I suspect that it's heavily related. Okay, so getting back to the card. So if you look at the uh, corrosion around the five volt linear dropout regulator, we know you can notice that it, well, it's firstly this corrosion here on the tab, which itself is not a problem, but you also may notice that this corrosion here. So, Unfortunately, one of my video clips got corrupted, and I'm going to have to interject with commentary. So you'll notice that there, there are those two um, corroded pads where there would be a zero-ohm resistor. Well, when I went to go measure the resistance of this zero-ohm resistor, it pretty much flew off the board. What ha what's happened is that the corrosion has not only not only has it ate away at the um, corrosion, the uh, pads that the resistor sits on, but we can take a guess that it's also actually ate away at, at our zero ohm resistor, given that the top, the right pad on the top right is actually our V control pa um, pad for our 1.8 volt LDO, and the pad on the bottom left is just the direct 5 volt output. But as you remember, we had 5 volts at the 5 volt output, but only 132 millivolts at the V control pad on the top right. So I went ahead and changed the zero, the I went ahead and installed a new resistor, as you'll see in a moment. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed a 1.8 ohm resistor, not 0 ohm, um, resistor in the location of where we expect to see 0 ohms. So I don't actually have any 0 ohm resistors lying around, so I've just used 1.8 ohms. The reason why we can get away, away with this in this case is because we have 5 volts and a significant amount of amperage, so it's not going to, you know, 1.8 ohms or 0 ohms, it's not going to make a significant difference. But in any case, let's go ahead, and actually, by the way, if you don't know, um, V-Control, if you haven't read the data sheets, it's, which I, I, will, link the, I will link the, the uh, data sheet for this APL5932A linear dropout regulator, but V-Control actually is the pin used to power the circuitry of our LDO, regu you know, linear dropout regulator. So, you know, without power to the internal circuitry, the LDO doesn't function properly. Anyways... Now let's get to actually, let's actually try to boot the card and let's see if we have 1.8 volts. I suspect that we will have 1.8 volts and that the card will boot, but 
we'll see. So, anyways, let's hook up, let's hook everything up. Okay, now let's boot the card and let's check um, for 1.8 volts. So first, let's check for on one 1.8 volts on the voltage rail. So we have 1.8 volts, and in particular, we have actually. Oh, okay, there we go. There's our BIOS splash screen, and of course, the rest of our BIOS. So if you're wondering why it looked corrupted, that's just um this motherboard that I'm using is actually very old. It. Anyways, so like I was saying, it's actually very old, so it doesn't actually work with a modern AMD card. It can't properly display the, um, well, it can't properly display the bio splash screen for some reason. I think it's UEFI related, but like I said, the motherboard's very old, so there's nothing actually wrong with the card. Actually, the other thing you may notice is that the MOSFET for GPU VRM is still not installed, so as you can see, some cards, at least this one, can actually, can actually run without a MOSFET installed, uh, sorry, not, not MOSFET, sorry, power stage, I should say, it's an integrated driver in MOSFET, so, anyways, the card seems to work, it's at least in a bootable state, I'm gonna go ahead and order a replacement power stage, and I'm gonna install it, and then we're gonna stress test the card. So as you can see, the card's running a game at the moment, it's been running game for about two hours now, which is more or less long enough. Just to be clear, I did reinstall a replacement MOSFET, so I think it's an FDMF 3035. Anyways, I'll have it linked in the description just in case you need to know the model. So, as it turns out, um, the only thing that was really wrong with the card was that zero ohm resistor. So, you know, remember we saw that we had corrosion, right? Well, as it, as you, as we can t now tell, you know, the corrosion was, you know, I guess the previous owner just left the corrosion on the board, and after some time, it ate away at the solder, and that zero ohm resistor literally fell off the card, and you know, resulting in the 1.8 volt power rail not actually turning on properly, so yeah, if you have a card with corrosion, you need to clean it right away, leaving it results in, well, stuff like what you saw here. But anyway, like I said, the card is fixed, I hope you learned something, despite the fact that it was a very simple fix, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.